Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back today with a DIY for you. And today's DIY is going to be some Poundland DIYs, especially for the garden. We've been having some fab weather here in the UK, so I thought now is the perfect time to make some pieces for your outdoor space if you're lucky enough to have one. So today we're going to be making a garden parasol. We're going to be making a folding table that you could also use inside as well, and also do a no so cushion which again is something that you could also have indoors too but I just wanted to make these all for the garden so that I can enjoy them outside over the weekend so before we jump in if you're new here do click subscribe I post new videos every single week and if you enjoy these Poundland DIYs for the garden then do give this video a little thumbs up and everything that I'm using in this video could be easily found elsewhere you can pick up many of these items from Amazon or even better you may already have them in your own home so please don't make any unnecessary trips to the stores while we are still in lockdown. Okay, let's get cracking with the parasol. For the parasol, I'm using one of these extendable shower curtain rods. This was two pounds, along with one of these garden lanterns. I'm starting off by removing the packaging and also the chain from the lantern and taking out the candle holder from inside. And I'm taking off the ends from the curtain rod. I'm going to go onto these with some surface primer from Rust-Oleum. And while that's drying, I'm going to add some of this self-adhesive decorative vinyl to the pole. I've just measured it out along the length of the pole and cut a piece to size before laying it out on the floor and wrapping it all the way around. This is quite tricky because this vinyl is very thin, but just smooth out any creases as you go. And I'm doing the same with the other rod. Now the primer has dried, I'm going on with this lovely copper colour from Rust-Oleum. And while that's drying, I'm going to take this umbrella and put it up indoors which is probably not the best luck but are you superstitious let me know in the comments. I'm going to take some of this baker's twine and wrap it around a coaster with a piece of twine already at the top there to create some tassels. So I'm wrapping it around 10 times before cutting the ends off, tying it off and then taking another piece of twine around the top to create the tassel shape. I'm just flaying out the ends as well to make it look a little bit more intricate. And I'm going to make eight of these so that there's one for each section of the umbrella. So I just need to jump in here and warn you that the next bit gets slightly gory so you might want to skip the next 20 seconds if that's not your vibe. But I just want to say that you don't need to remove the end of the umbrella. I'm going to show you something that's a lot more easy to do in the next step. So don't make the same mistake as I did or you'll end up with a very sore thumb knuckle. Cheeky thumbs up for that though. So after cleaning that up and popping a plaster on, I wanted to remove this part of the shower curtain rod so that I could put the umbrella inside it. But that again was quite tricky, so I decided to saw it off instead, just using a Poundland saw. And this came away quite nicely and it wasn't too tricky to do at all. And then I went on with some more of the spray paint onto the tassels just to make them tie in with the other bits of hardware. So I'm just adding this piece back onto the top and I'm going around the middle with some of this slug barrier tape just to make it look more decorative. I couldn't get the original bracket thing, I don't know what you call them, back on because of the vinyl so I just put that there instead. And now I'm taping off that sharp edge of the umbrella to avoid any further injury. Now for my parasol, I'm using a Christmas tree stand that I had in the loft. You could do the same if you have one, if not find a large container and maybe add some water to it. And next up, I'm attaching the lantern candle holder to the top of the umbrella just by slotting it in 
and then adding the lantern onto that. Now to disguise the Christmas tree base, I'm using one of these hanging baskets. So I'm going in and removing the chain and the plastic inside. And then I slid it down over the pole to sit nicely on the base. Next up, the top popped off, so I actually had to reattach the candle holder with a safety pin. Stay tuned for the outtakes at the end of the video. So now that's nice and secure, I'm slotting it into the curtain pole and going ahead and attaching all of the tassels just by tying on the two threads that were remaining on each one onto the metal parts of the umbrella. And there we go, as a final touch I added 10 string lights inside, these are just little battery operated ones that will give it a lovely glow of an evening. And here it is out on the roof garden, it was a very windy day when I was filming so it was getting blown about a little bit but I think it looks absolutely fab. It's not huge but it's big enough to shade one person from the sunshine and just lovely when you're reading or sitting out in the garden and you just want a little bit of shade from the sun. So next up we're going to be making a little folding side table. I wanted to have something outside that's just the perfect height to pop a little glass of something down when I'm relaxing out in one of the armchairs out there. So I've taken one of these camping stools and I'm removing the fabric seat from it using a sharp pair of scissors just to go around each of the bolts. Then I took a 12 inch pizza tray and a cake board which fitted inside of it perfectly. Just took the label off and that is literally this DIY. It's so simple but I wanted to not paint this one just to show you that you can make things without using any paint or extra tools and that sort of thing. And I think it is looking fab outside. I love the way the gold reflects the sunshine. And finally we have a no sew cushion. So these I thought would be really handy to throw outside on a blanket. You could also take one of these to an outdoor space near you if you're enjoying sunbathing in the park. The fleece fabric makes it really comfy and cozy. So it's also really nice to have indoors on your bed or on your sofa. So there's so many options of things that you can do with this. And also the great thing is you can do it with any different size pillows or cushions that you may have spare that are lying around. So for the no sew cushion, I've taken a fleece. I can't believe that this was only one pound for this huge throw. And I'm measuring out the size of a pillow. So choose any pillow or cushion that you want to make your pillowcase for and just measure around it and then mark out the shape of it with some masking tape. Once you've done that, you need to measure two inches out from each of the corners and then cut that triangle out like this. I can't explain this very well, but you can kind of see what I'm doing and then measure two inches away from your taped lines and cut that all the way around. So you've got two inches from the tape line and then your corners cut out as well. Go around and do the same on all sides. And then with a ruler, you need to cut some flaps, should we call them strips? I'm not sure, at one inch intervals. Thank you to the viewer that messaged me on Instagram and showed me a video from, I think it was Buzzfeed, that um, had the tutorial of this. I'll link it in the description box for you if you want to see the pros do it, but this is my attempt. So you go all the way around cutting out your flaps or strips or whatever you want to call them at the one inch intervals, or if you're like me, a bit higgledy piggledy. But anyway, once you've done that, fold each one in half and then cut a little slit into it. And you should have two layers of the fabric when you're doing this. So just double check each time that you've got both layers in your hand when you fold it over and you cut your little slit. So do that all the way around. It is a little bit time consuming, so you might want to pop something on to listen to. I was going to say watch, but maybe don't watch something while you're doing this. We've already had one injury. And then using a crochet hook or a paper clip, you need to feed it through the slit and then pick up the next flap thing <laughs> in line. I can't explain it very well, but then feed that one through. And then you just repeat this. So you put the hook through the slit, grab the next one into the hook, feed it back through the slit, 
and depending on how big you cut those slits will determine how easy it is to do this but you want it nice and snug so don't cut those slits too big it might take a little bit of work to get each one through but then just continue so hook goes through both pieces through the hole and then you hook the next one in line making sure that both pieces are in the hook and then feed it back through the hole And then you'll start to see a nice braid pattern forming on the edge of your pillow or your cushion. Once you've done three sides, you can feed in your pillow or your cushion before continuing on the remaining side. And when you get to the end, take the last piece and knot it off. and then tuck the remaining strips in on themselves and that is the pillow complete. I love the design of this, it's so soft and cosy with the fleece fabric and it's lovely for outdoors as well as indoors. Obviously you'd need to bring this one in if it does rain. So there we go, I really hope you enjoyed these DIYs for the garden. Let me know in the comments which one was your favourite and if you're going to be having a go at any of these I would love to see how you get on with them so don't forget to tag me in your pictures if you do make any of them. I'll leave my Instagram handles on the screen now for you and I'd love to see you over there as well. Do give the video a little thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you are new here. I'd love for you to stick around for future videos including lots more DIYs and I've got some fun stuff coming up this week which I can't wait to share with you as well. That sounds very vague. <laughs> my schedule's a bit all over the shop but I have got lots of videos in the pipeline. And yeah, if you're watching from the UK, I hope you have a lovely Sunday and also enjoy your bank holiday Monday tomorrow. If it's any different for you, let me know if it's just a normal day or if you're going to be taking a bit of a break. I'm going to take the day off, so I'm really looking forward to that. But yeah, I really hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. If the sun is shining where you are, enjoy that too. And if you have a go at any of these, then good luck and do keep me posted as to how you get on with them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. Put your broken rip off, wait for his arm Doesn't matter if the sun goes down We'll still be up, still be up Don't care about the place we found We'll still be up, still be up We're in this together We both fall down Doesn't matter if the sun goes down Cause we will still be high when the sun goes down